Hey, I'm functional nutritionist Vince Pitstick, and this is MMU Education. So Stevia, is it the miracle sweetener that we've been waiting on, or is it just another danger in the waiting? We look to answer that question in this video. There's actually been a lot of negative press on Stevia in the news recently. Um, there's been association studies or observation studies that have seen some incidences of conditions related to Stevia and also other ingredients that are used with Stevia um, in their instances of CVD and heart attacks. For example, erythritol. Uh, erythritol is a very, very popular sugar alcohol um, and it's gotten bad press lately. And it may appear, although data is changing on the time we need to look, that erythritol may be implicated in heart attacks uh, and strokes, which I'm not the biggest fan of that sugar alcohol, though using it in little amounts shouldn't scare anybody. But it's prompted this debate, right? Like any sugar that's come along, right, or fake sugar, for example, uh, has always come uh, with such high praise, right? And then everyone starts using it, and then we find out, you know, three to seven years later, oops, maybe we shouldn't have taken that. And is that going to be the same fate for stevia? So let's break this down. So what is stevia? So stevia first is a plant sweetener. So it's it's not an artificial sweetener to the same thing as you might look at like an equal, like an aspartame or a Splenda, for example. It is extracted from plants and it has been used uh, by indigenous cultures for hundreds of years actually as, as a sweetener. So it's it's been around a long time and I think that's important to point out. Um, it became popular in the United States, I mean, roughly about 15 years ago at this point and is now bled into our culture more and more and more with greater amounts of consumption. Now, most of the studies that are done are in vitro or in vivo. Those are not randomized control trials. So you're looking at more anecdotal evidence or association evidence rather than hardcore randomized control trials like we might have on other uh, artificial sweeteners. But again, it's important that we figure some of these things out now and not wait for the data to come out 20 years later to realize that there's a problem. And I think we've seen that time and time again. So stevia is essentially, the ingredient inside of it is called steviol glycosides. So your body's ability to metabolize these in the microbiome of your gut, which is now considered its own organelle really, like your heart, your microbiome, the bacteria that lays in your gut, will greatly impact the symptoms that you would have related to stevia. I know when stevia first came out, uh, for me, I saw it as the miracle uh, and I was consuming it in every meal, uh, all flavored drinks, multiple times a day. Uh, I, I looked at it as free money. Uh, maybe some of you as well, if you're in the fitness or diet community, have seen that too. And uh, it worked for a while. And so a lot of other Americans are now doing this today. And so I think it's important to understand that the glycosides in there are 200 to 400 times stronger than regular sugar, for example. And so it has, it packs a punch. It is slightly bitter. So that's why a lot of times you'll see erythritol or you'll see monk fruit or you'll see cane sugar splashed in with it to try to take off the bitter aftertaste that can come from stevia. Now, this comes off the heels of the average American taking over 17 tablespoons of sugar. I, I, I cannot explain that yes, stevia is most certainly better than sugar. But once again, if we overconsume stevia all the same, will we end up with other conditions? So take a look at this data right here. Uh, this is looking at about 14 different studies um, on stevia. Now, again, these are in vitro and in vivo it means in cell studies and in animal studies, but you can gain a lot by looking at the brevity of the data and seeing what the trends are, especially when you take in my 18 years of experience using it as different ingredients in rare conditions and also aesthetic performance. I have a really good grasp of looking at the clinical application, like the clinical data in person, hundreds of cases, thousands of cases. And then also looking at the data and the research and saying, are there similarities that we can take from this to extrapolate out what the data is about to say in five or seven years on Stevia? Um, so looking at it this way, when you look at the data overwhelmingly, when people are in highly inflamed states from eating a lot of sugar or processed foods and they switch to Stevia, the results are pretty incredible right? And even if the person wasn't on a massively bad diet, 
the data overwhelmingly looks really good. When we look at stevia, we see reductions in blood pressure. We see improvements in blood sugar. We see reductions in inflammatory markers. That would suggest that stevia is certainly an alternative that is generally safe for the public. The FDA came out and agreed with this because stevia is classified as grass by the FDA, which is generally regarded as safe. And so that's why it's used in medical foods and other medicinal based products because of its safety profile. However, uh, as data has gone on and as this research shows, when you take a look here, there were about four studies that showed negative results to the microbiome. So if we go past the cardiovascular results and we start looking systemically throughout the body, where can we find fault? And it would appear that yes, in fact, Stevia does have some negative side effects, particularly in the gut microbiome, which we're learning more every day is really part of the core of your health. So typically when Americans change their diet, you're going to immediately see changes in their cardiovascular system. Okay. Especially in the first eight to 12 weeks. So blood pressure, blood sugars, maybe even cholesterol, liver enzymes, all that's going to happen. But then as any ingredient sits in your body being consumed at a high rate for a long period of time, we have to look at secondary systems that may be impacted by this. And that is oftentimes the microbiome. So how does it impact the microbiome? Well, in many cases, it actually had improvements to the microbiome. This particularly, um, when we, when we think about studies of people who have been eating really bad and have a poor microbiome and then switch to stevia, usually there'll be improvements in the microbiome. Although there were four instances, as I said, where it actually negatively impact the microbiome. And then the data goes further. If you take a look here, it would appear that the argument about stevia is not really about if it's good, it's how much is good for you. And so in some of the studies of higher consumption, we see reductions in really good bacteria and you see growth in commensal bacteria. What is that? That's bacteria that's been in your gut since you were born. That's not really good for you or bad for you. It's just there synthesizing some vitamins, releasing some acids. And what happens is that you get a little bit of overgrowth. We also see this in clinical evidence with our doctors and our coaches is that people, when they overconsume stevia, we start seeing growths in commensal bacteria that leads to irritation in the gut, uh, maldigestion, rashes, hives, and the like. So with stevia currently, it would appear that from the data, it is certainly safe to consume and should be used, especially if you're on a high sugar diet, great idea to reduce some of that sugar load, particularly refined processed sugar, right? And move over to some of that usage to stevia. Um, the recommendation for a human consumption is right around four milligrams per kilogram. So it, take like a 150 pound female, for example, typically maybe five, four or five, six, something like that. She should be able to uh, use 10 packets of stevia a day and not experience some of the GI symptoms that has been noted in some of the data. However, I would argue for you, while that might be true in a one day consumption, if you were to consume that many packets for months on end, you are going to end up with gut issues. So the thing that was good for you over consumed on a daily basis too long without breaks or deloads, you could say, or cycling off of it can then become the problem. And you wonder why your gut's being irritated and you're having other issues. So Stevia, is it friend or foe? Well, it's both. And it depends on the lifestyle behavior of the user that's using it. I think there are some people with imbalanced microbiomes that may have to do some gut work or do a detox and flush their gut or use some probiotics to then consume and digest that steviol glycoside correctly. But after that, most people should be able to use stevia. Great. Shouldn't be a problem at all. I would suggest if you're going to take up to 10 packets a day that you should only do that on and off, you know, for a few months here, a few months there, switch over to other sweeteners. Don't be afraid to use some sugar. Some people get so afraid of using any sugar. That's a problem. Sugar isn't bad. Eating an inflammatory lifestyle, living very stressed and eating a lot of sugar. That's bad. So let's not be afraid of sugar. Let's not be afraid of stevia, but let's remember over consuming anything like stevia then becomes the enemy. I can share with you personally in my own life that when I was at that many packets a day, I was bloated, distended, and uncomfortable. 
So now I like a blend. I'll use some monk fruit. I'll use some honey. Um, I'll use some stevia. I'll use some cane uh, sugar. Um, I'll mix these things up. I have rotated to more monk fruit now because of flavor purposes. But once again, I would assume that even though why monk fruit looks like this amazing thing to use now, I bet overconsumed long term, you're seeing the same issues. So let's not run around being afraid of stevia. Let's just understand we can't overconsume anything for too long uh, without experiencing poor health effects. If you like this content, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also hit the notification bell so you can be made aware of every Wednesday when we drop our new videos.